Now today we're looking at this guy. This is an intake air temperature sensor as well as a mass airflow sensor. It's one sensor all built into one. But if you are getting a trouble code regarding intake air temperature sensor, you can quickly test this sensor and see if it's working correctly. So that being said, let's jump over to the vehicle. I'll show you where it's located. We'll remove it, test it on the bench. It takes very, very quick, maybe five minutes, you'll know what's going on and you'll be on your way. Now the first step is just locating where the sensor lives. Now one thing you can try is a Google image search for your specific vehicle. And a lot of times you can dig up diagrams and schematics showing where the sensor lives. If you can't find that, try forums. If that doesn't work, then ultimately you can purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle and it will show all of the sensors and the locations for your, for your vehicle. If you plan on doing work on your own car, it's the best thing you can do. So the first thing is just to remove it from the vehicle so you guys have a clearer image of what's going on. Now I've already disconnected the negative terminal going to the battery. That's always a good idea because you don't want to take any chances shorting anything. And let's go ahead and remove it from the air box and throw it on the bench. And just be gentle with the sensor. And there you go. So now we have the sensor on the bench, and I want to see what's going on with the sensor. I want to see if it's reacting to heat, and that's why you see a hairdryer here. But before we get to that, let me just quickly explain the trouble codes. At idle, when this vehicle is running, and most vehicles, this sensor pushes out a voltage to the car's computer. And on idle, usually it's between 0.3 volts up to 4.6. Now, if you go under that 0.3 volt threshold, that's trouble code P0112. The voltage is just too low. If you go above 4.6, 4.7, that's trouble code P0113. That's it. That's all it means, low voltage and high voltage. Regarding P0111, Whatever information this sensor sends to the car's computer, it compares that to other sensors, such as the coolant temperature sensor and the oil temperature sensor. And these vehicles today are very computerized. All the sensors work in conjunction with one another. And if whatever this is sending to the car computer or the ECM is not matching up with other sensors, then it throws a trouble code, and that would be 111. So that's all that those trouble codes mean. But we can test the sensor. Now to do that, you need a digital multimeter. You can pick these up essentially anywhere, Home Depot, Lowe's, Auto Parts Store, Amazon, maybe 25 bucks. But what we need to do is a resistance test or an ohms test. And you want to look for the omega symbol on your multimeter. Now a good reading should be between two, two and a half kilo ohms for many, many vehicles uh, at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So in other words, if it's very cold, that number will be higher. If it's warm outside, that number will be lower. Okay, so again, uh, around two to two and a half kilo ohms at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if that sounds confusing, this is all you do. You have two leads from the multimeter. Okay, you have a black lead and you have a red lead. And all that I'm doing is I'm taking these two leads and I'm touching the prongs of the sensor. Now, this, in this sense, you have to do a little research because every car is different. A lot of times they're toward the end of the, uh, of the sensor. In other words, we have five prongs in this sensor. Other sensors may have six, but you need to find out which prongs to touch. Now, in this case, it's the last two on the right. So I'm just touching the leads from the, from the multimeter to the sensor. Then I'm going to apply heat to the sensor, and this should reduce. Now, if you do this test, you don't see any reading here whatsoever. Sensor's bad. Now, just to make this easy, I'm going to use alligator clips, or at least one of them. And on this vehicle, the, they're just so close to prong. So this will be a little interesting to do on camera. It's going to be a little difficult, but we'll get it. So I'm just touching this lead to this. Now, it doesn't matter if, which lead, if, if red goes to the right. Or, or you're using the black lead to the right, doesn't matter. Just touch the leads to the sensor and that's it. Now we should see a reading here. Let me uh, see what we have here. So 
So three kilo ohms, and that's because in here it's maybe around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a little cold in this garage right now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the hair dryer, and we should see this number decrease, okay? Here we go. First get a reading. All right, put it in the heat. You see how quickly it drops? And then if I remove it from the heat, it should rise. And there you go. So this verifies that the sensor is working correctly. Now the reason why you want to do this test is you may have a perfectly fine sensor, but you're getting a trouble code regarding an idle air temperature problem. But maybe there's a problem with the wiring. In other words, check the harness, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the harness connector. Make sure that it clips on the sensor very, very securely. Make sure there's no water in there. You don't have any breaks in the wiring because that could be your issue even though the sensor is perfectly fine. It doesn't make sense running to the store, spending your 40 plus dollars, your time and money, coming back and figuring out later that this is perfectly fine. So that's the reason behind it. But this is working correctly. I don't have a trouble code here. I'm just doing this as a how-to. So thank you for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then.